Hi everybody, this is Joanne and you're in my lab and I'd like to speak to you today about the chemical composition of nail polish. Hi everybody, this is Joanne. Today's book reminded me a lot of some of the great chemistry professors I had, especially during college, who could make chemistry come alive by applying it to practical aspects of your life. This is Joanne and I'm in this slightly unusual position because today I want to talk to you a little bit about different formulations of mascara and I've chosen three here to demonstrate uh, two properties uh, we find in chemistry and uh, this would be um, whether a substance is hydrophilic or hydrophobic and then I've got one that seems to bridge the gap somewhere in between. Hi, this is Joanne and you're in my lab ready to work, I think. All right, close toe shoes, sturdy pants, lab coat, careful back, safety glasses, plain So we're going to go ahead and set a few things on fire just to prove this is true. And I remember when I learned about how cyanide acts on the mitochondria in the body to stop respiration and result in death all the way down to the molecular level. This was quite fascinating. And today's book is about how chemistry can harm us in the most horrid of ways. What else do we need? Baby gloves. Not these. These gloves? No. Here I've got nail polish on a slide. This has been dried for a couple weeks already, so just to prove it's still quite flammable, we're going to hold it over a flame, nail polish on the top, and watch. It'll smoke, flame up, and burn out. I think I'll also put in your mugs. Let's see what else. Oh. And first aid kit. Now we are ready to handle today's book. The Poisoner's Handbook is compiled in this book called Mad Science. Experiments you can do at home but probably shouldn't. So this book is by Sam Keen and it's called The Disappearing Spoon. We're going to rely on Theo Gray's book called The Elements to show our top eight. And it's a book called Napoleon's Book. This book is called Giant Molecules from Nylon to Nanotubes. Hydrophilic molecule tends to have a lot of um, weak hydrogen bonds. And then in the presence of water, um, if, if molecules can make hydrogen bonds between each other, then they can also make it with water, because water has hydrogen bonding, so they can sort of exchange this and then become dissolved in the solution. So water is very attractive and that's why we've got that hydrophilic name. So coming in at number eight is element 26, iron. This material is uh, cellulose fibers from a plant that's been soaked in sulfuric acid and then soaked again in nitric acid or potassium nitrate. There's some variations in how this is done what happens is we end up with this explosive material. So not that we want our nail polish explosive, but it does have other great uses as in gun cotton. And also uh, you can use this as magician's flash paper. But for At number six is one made popular by Oliver Sacks. Element 74, tungsten. Um, something that's hydrophobic is uh, often represented um, it's a long carbon chain with uh, hyd a hydrogen on the side, so CH bonding, and fats, waxes, fall into that definition. Okay, so maybe you can see here I've got a flame going, and this is an alcohol burner. It's filled with some of the very material that we use to uh, use as a solvent for nail polish, so proof it's flammable. But um, what I'd like to do is to set this nitrocellulose on fire, and you'll see it'll go up pretty quickly and make a quick uh, <laughs> actual flash, hence the term flash paper. Here we go. Are you ready? And then there's not a single bit of residue left over. Now, Number three is a very cool metal that's liquid at room temperature all the time. Element 80. Mercury. So the third book I'd like to recommend is about very big molecules that we call polymers where we've taken small molecules 
and they've joined together to form a very large molecule. The polymers occur in nature, such as in proteins and DNA and RNA, and those assemble spontaneously. We have also made, as human beings and researchers, very, very large molecules by putting molecules together. So um, polyethylene, nylon, for instance. These are polymers that most of us are aware of. But nanotubes are also examples of polymers. That's so the, the bonds between the individual uh, molecules of the polymer, we have things like styrene in here and some other copolymers in here, what I think happens is those uh, bonds form very strongly like they would for a waterproof mascara, but then the interface between the lash or the hairs here and the mascara is very weak and that's susceptible to warm water coming in and breaking the, the you know, helping loosen the polymer and have it come right off of here and it comes off in strings or tubes now and our winner is element six carbon the stuff of life and favored by biologists everywhere. Thank everybody so much for voting and participating in this poll and for your enthusiasm for science in general. Thanks. Bye.